big applause for the Pisindu Choir. Yeah. Woo! Oh my God. This is wonderful. Again, that's the future of men. Do you agree with me? One more time. You know, I can't be happy more than tonight. I'm not sure what to say at this time because we are so honored and blessed at Prosperity Man to have all of you here. But most importantly, guess who's here tonight? We have our governor of the great set of men, Jeremy Mills. This is what we say when we invite all of you to come to the block party. Look around you. I'm sure and I'm positive that this is the biggest crowd of a diversity party we ever had and you can't find this anywhere else in the city of Poland. Even in the state of Maine. Diversity is a wealth. That's what we're talking about. Again, today we are honored to have our governor, General Mills, here with us. But also, we have so many other elected officials. I know that uh, our mayor, Ethan, is in the crowd. Thank you. Please, if you can come forward. Come forward and sit down here. Mayor Ethan was in Agassa, but he was texting me that I'm on my way. This is the man of the city. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Also, we have many city councillors tonight. And also, we have the delegation from Senator King's office and the Pringles office. All the elected officials, if you are here, please rise so we can recognize you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to just, because I have a limited time, I want to thank all our major sponsors. Because we could not host this without them. I want to recognize some, and our chairwoman, Helen, will come and give the rest of the list. On the major sponsors, we have Hennefer Supermarket, we have IDEX, Men Credit Union League, Infinity Federal Credit Union, Norway Savings, Residential and Community Support Services, and MEMIC. If you can give them applause, please. If you see someone wearing a badge with a sponsor tag on it, please thank them on our behalf. Say thank you. Today marks our first anniversary of Prosperity Man since we switched from community financial literacy. But it's also our 11th anniversary since we started the organization. Yes. The transition from financial literacy to financial stability was a statement of 10 years of service. And I know we are proud of this. All of us. Prosperity Man's vision was the same and remained the same, is to see all immigrants and the refugees and the low-income community build financial stability and improve their lives. 
Of course, we couldn't have done this without many volunteers, including our board member and the small staff that we have. I want to ask anybody who is our volunteer, any staff and a board member to rise so you can be recognized, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. You're going to hear more about our program later on. But let me say this. They want me to be brief. They want me to take only five minutes. How, how, how am I doing so far? So far so good? Three years ago, we had the pleasure of having the main attorney general, who was then Jenna Mills, to come and speak to us. That was a three years ago. Today, we have the pleasure of having the first elected woman governor of the state of Maine, <laughs> Governor Mills. Yes. We are so proud of you, Governor Mills. Please put your hands together to welcome Governor Mills on the stage. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Claude. Thank you, Claude, and to your board and all the staff and the supporters of Prosperity Maine. Uh, you know, I cannot imagine what it is to be uh, what it would be like to be a new Mainer, a new uh, immigrant, coming to a state like this from a totally foreign land and a cash-based society uh, and not being able to work initially, not being able to find good housing and uh, obtain work and support your family, and especially not being able to uh, understand basic financial transactions that m many of us here were uh, trained in at, at an early age. Just balancing checking accounts, credit cards, uh, buying a car, renting a place, or buying a home. Uh, all these things are so vital to, for the new Mainers in this room and elsewhere to become part of our workforce that we so badly need you for. Uh, and so it is a pleasure to be here, Claude, not for the first time and not for the last time, to support this organization and to encourage the support of others for this institution, uh, which does so much great work. I think I read over the last 10 years, you've had like 840 uh, individuals help through the process to become productive citizens of the United States, productive members of the main workforce. We need you. You know, the report last fall that said, uh, that the workforce is diminished in Maine. We have such a great need for people to come here. It's not just a humanitarian thing I'm saying. It's an economic necessity for all of the state of Maine. And we welcome you. And so I meant it during my inaugural speech, and I've meant it since then when I say to everyone who's born and bred in Maine, to people coming here from other states, people coming back to Maine, to people coming to Maine for the first time, and to all new Mainers, welcome home. Thank you. Good evening. I always say that my name is Clema Yombe. I am the program director at Prosperity Maine. And I always say it, it gives me a lot of pressure to talk right after Claude. <laughs> and today, I get even more pressure to talk after the governor. Thank you all for coming. My name is Clement Yombe. I am the program coordinator, the program director. That's my new, I used to be program coordinator. Now I'm a program director. I got a raise, so. Uh, <laughs> I have to be used to my new title now. For years we have been providing financial education, bringing knowledge and awareness to those we serve. With the knowledge they receive, our students are becoming financially stable. And 
and well prepared to improve their economic position and improve their chances of becoming financially stable. The question we ask ourselves was how someone can improve their chances if they, do not, they, they do not have all the tools they need, all the necessary tools. And one of the important tools we identify was higher education. And we said higher education is a stepping stone to financial stability. You know, if you are at a crossroad of life, torn between the option of high school diploma and university, there is one statistic we need to know. If you are a college degree holder, the probability of being unemployed is one in 40. That apart, and the earning capacity of a college graduate is far more higher than the one of a high school graduate. The problem with that is not everyone has access to funds, public or private. I'm talking about the asylum seekers. They do not have that chance of pursuing their higher education. Because of the immigration status, these brilliant high school graduates are not eligible to receive any federal or state financial aid. That is where we stepped in. And last year, with a generous gift or contribution, we have provided three full scholarships to asylum seekers who are attending SMCC and the University of Southern Maine. And let me tell you that their individual GPAs are above 3.5. And today, today I am proud to announce that we are going to award tonight 11 full scholarships to students who will be attending SMCC, USM, and CMCC. And our hope, our hope at Prosperity Main is to expand this scholarship program and to help as many as we can. Having said that, I want to invite all of us to watch a short video featuring this year's scholarship recipients. The scholarship to me is a step further to my dream because Financially, you need some sort of support in order to get to where you're trying to go. Since I, I was a little boy, I always dreamed of obtaining a college degree. So being selected to get the Prosperity Mind Scholarship, it's a great honor to me. Education to me means life-changing because without education, you won't be able to get a good job, you won't be able to make a difference, you won't be able to be someone that people will look up to. It just means, right now, it means everything for me, and I just want to keep pursuing my dreams, and now I know it's going to be possible, everything I want to do. Thanks for the scholarship. My dream is to become a nurse, and this scholarship it will help me become one, because it will help me pay for my school, and it will give me the courage to continue and go forward. And education, for me personally and as a woman, means a lot because it's going to make me stand out in the community and it's going to make me um, accomplish certain things that I have within me and I know that I can only get it through a seat at school or at the university. My dream is to become a medical doctor, to be more specific, a uh, gynecologist. And this scholarship will open up more doors for me to focus more on school rather than focusing on how to have more money for my education. My dream is to become a lawyer, and this scholarship will open a way for me to become a lawyer in future one day. I have always dreamed to become an engineer, and I, I dreamed about it since I was a kid, since I started watching fancy movies, and then, yeah, that's my dream. And education 
it's going to help me get through it. There is no other option. The scholarship is going to help me through it because I need money to pay for the scholarship, for the school and the expenses, and then the scholarship is going to help me. At least I'm, I know I'm going to get my bachelor's degree from the scholarship, so I'm so happy. It is my pleasure to bring forward this year Prosper Scholarship recipient. Please hold your applause until all the recipients are here. Lydia Badose. Ndoma Diabaka. Toussaint Christelle Falangani. Fatia Ismail. Julie Kambali. Tara Kanga. P. Kiduga. Stephanie Lumu. Eliezer Mumbele. Sarah Rosindana. and Kaunga Yaga. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the Prosper Scholarship recipients. Thank you. You may all sit it. Be seated. You can go back. I'm going to call P. P. Can you come forward? We have a surprise for you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Helen Andrioli. I'm the board chair of Prosperity Maine, and we are all here this evening to celebrate a number of things. And one of those is that it is Pi Kaduga's birthday. So I'm hoping on the count of three, we can all say happy birthday, Pi. One, two, three. Happy birthday, Pi. As I mentioned, my name is Helen Andreoli, and I'm the board chair of Prosperity Maine. And I am absolutely thrilled to be up here doing what I consider a very easy job, and that is going to be asking each and every one of you to open up your wallets and help us this evening. As you just saw, we put, gave 11 scholarships, full scholarships, to SMCC, USM, and CMCC. Our goal tonight is to raise $15,000, and that will allow us to send three more students to school. So if you've seen around on the tables, we have text to give instructions. They're here up on the, on the board, and I'm actually going to give you the number. All you need to do is text GIVE to 618-9528. Please open your wallets. The money goes directly to these students to give those scholarships. And if you don't, I'll be up here again to ask in about 10 minutes. <laughs> so make my job easy. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. It looks a lot 
The crowd is a lot bigger from up here, so. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm ho I hope you are all having a great evening. My name is Joanna Cowett, and I am the financial education instructor at Prosperity Maine. <laughs> Over the past 11 years, um, Prosperity Maine has served hundreds of people. Today, I have the honor of speaking with two of them. Um, first, we are going to talk with Bright, who will tell us about her experience with the financial education program that we tailor specifically with the new Mainer in mind. And next, we will be talking about the SEED program, SEED standing for Supporting Immigrant Tenants with BBI. Um, and the SEED program helps people pay for their um, security deposits when they cannot afford them, and it's an interest-free loan. So without further ado. All right. Okay. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Great. Yeah. So, um, Bright, when you first arrived in Maine, I'm sure you had um, different questions about what is a credit score or how to budget or even where to put your money when you start working. Mm -hmm. So was it easy for you to get that information from other community members? Uh, well, firstly, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Bright. Um, Based on your question, Joanna, it wasn't really easy because I remember when we came here, that wasn't even like something I was thinking about quite honestly. Like there were just so many other thoughts in my head about like what we were going to do. We had just gotten here. So I really wasn't sure about anything else. But um, we had gotten in contact with the local adult education school and uh, they were able to orientate us a little bit. but. Uh, they didn't really give us the information that we needed, but thankfully there were people from our community that we knew and they were like, oh, there's this class that's given by then uh, Community Financial Literacy, you guys should participate in that. So we were like, what's the class about? They told us it was about money management and learning about finances and how things go on in the United States. So we're like, definitely, I mean, we're not doing anything, so we might as well profit upon that class. So we went to the class that was taught by Monsieur Clément, and we took part in that. And honestly, I have to say it was it was it was so useful to us because as soon as we left that class, uh, a couple of months later we started working, so we were able to um, use the knowledge that we gained from that class right from the get-go. So like uh, the first thing I did was open. Um, a bank account with a credit union instead of a bank because you know I didn't want to have to handle all the fees that banks come with. <laughs> so I opened a bank, account, a bank account at a credit union and that was based on the information that I got from class. So I would have to say definitely like that was the road to taking the class and then from that point forward the knowledge that we gained we definitely used it um, right from the get-go. That's awesome. Yeah. And I also happen to know that you took the class with your mother and brother. I did. <laughs> How was it to have that experience with them? It was funny. It was, it was a ball in class because obviously I had my mother and I had my brother. So I had people who at the end of the class essentially would have to keep me accountable. Like if I were, like for example, at this point in my life, if I'm messing with my money, my mom will be like, you know, we took that class. What yeah. are you doing? You know? So <laughs> that, that's essentially what is happening. I remember we were having a talk with my brother and my mother the other day. And my brother was like, hmm. I think I need to go back to Monsieur Clement's class. I, I don't think I listened the first time. And we all laughed about it because that's just what the information is to us. It's so useful that you can use it in your everyday life. So yeah. I think the best part that we took it as a family is that we hold each other accountable and we can always remind each other about what we learned in the class. Yeah, yeah. and you can all kind of grow together, Yeah, right? exactly. Thank exactly. you so much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Vivian, so as um, Governor Mills mentioned earlier, new immigrants oftentimes don't arrive here with the possibility to work. And in terms of the SID program supporting immigrant tenants, what was your reaction when you heard that you would have to provide the security deposit yourself? Well, it was like heaven because I have to, to explain. As a single person, when you are depressed coming from another country arriving here you have to find your path is already difficult so just imagine a parent with children you have to take them to get them to school 
So, as we say in Africa, everything starts with a home. Yeah. If you don't have a safe place to sleep, how can you dream hard? Yeah. So everything starts with a home. And when you find this program where they just tell you that, go and see them, maybe they can assist you to get a deposit for you to get an apartment or a house for you and your family. This is at that specific moment because it was so critical for you. It's like heaven, as I said, yeah. because it's so tough to go looking for from churches, from other resources, and you don't get it. Mm -hmm. And you know, and coming from Africa, you come here this winter, yeah. and it's so difficult for you already. Yeah. With family, you have to get used to a new weather, and at the same time, you have to make sure you're providing for your children, and they're looking up to you to see what you'll bring to them. Yeah. So just imagine finding yourself in this situation. Yeah. And when you find this program, it's just like they're giving you millions. Yeah. Thank you. And um, <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned the churches. Um, what did it mean to you to have this opportunity as a loan as opposed to having it as charity? Yes, talking about charity, you know, it's not always a guarantee that you're going to get it. When you go begging here and there, and sometimes you might not even get a positive response, and you feel, you feel more depressed because it's kind of some dignity yeah. if you go for a loan, and you know that at a certain period of time you can pay it back, and on the other hand, it's helping you build a credit score because coming in this country, you realize that everything has to go to a loan. If you want to get later a car or years to come, you need to go for a house, for yeah. example, you'll need credit score. And by going through this program, the good thing about it is you, you, they be lending this money to you and you know that you're going to pay it back and you feel good yeah. because it's not always good to go begging around and getting negative response it kills your self-esteem yeah. and and all these mixed feelings sometimes it's no good but yeah. when you have this dignity of repaying back and you feel that you helping also uh, you helping yourself when they helping the community they you helping also yourself of keeping the track yeah. keeping your moral high yeah. and you know, right. I hope that uh, when you're building your credit score through this, it helps you set your fit here in this country. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Round of applause to both of them. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on. Oh. Oh. It's a gift for you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Joanna, Bibian, and Bright, all amazing young women. So the first time I came up here was a test. This time it's not a test. I need everybody who has sat here and witnessed these um, remarkable young people who are pursuing their dreams, their education, and their future in this state to open their wallet and text GIVE to 618-9528. Our goal tonight is $15,000. We would really love to be able to stand up here next year and say that we sent at least three more students to college. We had 53 applicants this year, and I spoke with one of the members of the committee that chose the 11. They told me that they wanted to give 53 scholarships because everybody was equally dedicated, in need, and desiring an education. So please open your wallets, text, or I should say open your phone, text GIVE to 618-9528, and please make a donation. Thank you. We only have 10 percent. I can't see the screens, Claude. 10%. We have almost 300 people in this room. We need to be more than 10%. Thank you. I think this number needs to go quick because 
Otherwise, if we cannot even send one student to college, the 400 people who are here, I don't think that would be done a good job. I'm just joking. The moment of appreciation has come. Keep texting, but at the same time, listening to me if you can. Every year, we try our best to recognize individuals, businesses, and organizations that have done a wonderful job supporting the community, supporting our organization. We have done this recognition since 2012, almost seven years ago. We have three awards that we always give away. We provide a Commitment to Service Award, an Outstanding Community Partner Award, Volunteer of the Year Award. And I'm going to tell you the fourth one just for this event. So we have so many partners, sponsors, and supporters that we want them to come on stage to recognize these wonderful people. The first award will be a commitment to service, and I will call one of our sponsors, Eileen from Memek, to come forward and give the first award. Thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. It has been my pleasure to serve on this board of directors for the last year and to see all the wonderful work that's being done here at Prosperity Maine. So the 2018 Outstanding Community Partner Award goes to Infinity Credit Union. Infinity. Infinity has been a partner of Prosperity Maine since 2017. And Joanna just highlighted um, a little bit about the Supporting Immigrant Tenants Program, which Infinity has been the chief financial backer for since we started that program. Um, asylum seekers often lack the financial resources in order to secure that initial security deposit and Infinity's commitment with Pros Prosperity Maine has changed the playing field. So far, we've been able to loan 18 families the money to get into housing. And we're hoping with the long-term commitment that Infinity has pledged, we will continue to be able to do that for numerous families in the coming years. So Prosperity Maine is presenting the Outstanding Community Award, Partner Award to Infinity Credit Union, and thank you for your continued support. And I'd like to bring up I'd like to bring up Candy Moreau, who's the Chief Lending Officer from Infinity, to accept this award. I can't hold it or I'll drop it. Um, wow. I did prepare something, um, but it was very corporate and very boring. And what I'm seeing here is just like outstanding. Um, it's, very, it's very emotional what I'm hearing tonight, what I'm seeing. You don't get a taste for what this community goes through until you sit with something like this and listen to it. So, I'll make it quick. I do remember our first meeting, sitting down with Claude and uh, Caroline and... Kevin. Kevin? Yes. And Kevin. And we sat around the table and we discussed the SIT program, the uh, deposits for these people that truly needed it. And we went round and round and we had um, a nice discussion. And as I was sitting there listening to them, I got the feeling of how passionate they were about what they were doing. And you can't help but, f but fall into it when you hear it. So, I, and I know I'm talking for everybody that was at that table. It was more than just a business venture. It was 
It was perhaps a divine intervention, if I dare to say so. And we are so proud to be a part of it. Um, and we just look for it to go on and on. Thank you. You know, when I approached Infinity and uh, another partner, Seaport, to see how they, who can support me with this project, Infinity really came very strong and said, we're going to pledge 100,000 for this particular program. It was amazing that really no one could be that. And again, thank you. My friend Liz, the CEO, is not here, but I know Liz and I have really worked very well in this program starting about three years ago. Again, thank you, Infinity, for what you do. My bad, that was outstanding community partner. Now, we're going to award the Community to Service Award, and I will ask another board member, and also CEO and the President of the Chamber to come, Quincy, to come and give this award. Please, welcome on stage. Um, my name's Quincy Hensel, as Claude said, I'm the CEO of the Portland Regional Chamber of Commerce. I also serve on the board of directors of Prosperity Maine, and I'm a very proud board member to be a part of this organization. And it's my distinct honor this evening to present this evening's 2018 Commitment to Service Award, which this year is being awarded to Hannaford Supermarkets. Now, Hannaford is a committed partner with all of the communities it serves. As a company, it focuses its charitable giving on hunger relief, health and wellness, and child and family development. Last year, Hannaford donated more than 14 million pounds of food from its stores to food pantries across Maine and the statewide Good Shepherd Food Bank. Hannaford supports hundreds of local organizations each year because they understand that these types of partnerships make the places that we live and work better. They similarly support Prosperity Maine because as a company, they understand that supporting our organization is an investment in the success of new Mainers and in the future of our state. The individuals who are learning the important life skills through Prosperity Maine are Hannaford's customers and their associates. Through their work with Prosperity Maine, new Mainers learn to make the most of their resources and how to find economic security and live fulfilling lives. Hannaford understands that a strong community takes the work of many different individuals and organizations coming together and that a strong community is crucial to having a strong business. Please help me in welcome, welcoming to the stage Eric Blom, the Director of Community Relations as, at Hannaford Supermarkets to receive the 2018 Commitment to Service Award. Wow, what an evening. Thank you so much for the songs and the music. And it's, it, I, I hope everybody's enjoying it as much as I have been because I think it's been a, a wonderful, wonderful night of celebration. And one of the things that uh, we're here at Hanford to celebrate is the work of Claude and the staff and the volunteers of Prosperity Maine that really are changing the lives of, of people in our community and, and by extension changing our communities for the better. Uh, and it's not just about economic prosperity, it's really about the richness that is being brought to us from our new Mainers, people who bring a richness of experience, of perspective, of knowledge that all of us are learning from and, and grow from as a community and as individuals. And for that, we want to thank both the organization and this entire community of uh, immigrants and refugees who uh, are celebrating here with us tonight. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Eric, and thank you, Quincy. So you helped the crowd to be a little bit quieter. The third recipient is a Volunteer of the Year Award. And I'm going to invite my best friend, Sherry Stevens, to come and provide the award. Thank you, Claude. I could not be more honored to be helping to present this particular award tonight. We see it often, right? We see folks coming together and donating their time and their skills to help advance the mission of organizations like Prosperity Maine. They're on the front lines, they're where the rubber meets the road and really making a difference to execute events and um, programs that these organizations are putting out there into our communities to make a real difference and keep our communities healthy. The recipient of the award tonight is certainly no exception to that. She's not only out there in the community executing an event, she created it. Yes. The 20... <laughs> the 2018 Volunteer of the Year Award goes to Sue Rudale Rudalevich. All right, Byron, you were wrong on this. Rudalevich. <laughs> Sue is a U.S. citizen who migrated. <laughs> Sue, why don't you come on up here while I talk about you for a moment? Sue is a U.S. citizen who migrated from England. She has always been passionate about helping fellow immigrants and has worked hard alongside her husband to find solutions to challenges they face. In 2017, she and her colleagues, um, also on the volunteer committee at Prosperity Maine and here tonight, co-founded the Supporting Immigrant Tenants Program, better known as SIT. When they introduced the SIT program to the team at Prosperity Maine, they immediately saw the value and moved quickly to incorporate it into their programs. Sue continued to lead the SIT program as a volunteer coordinator throughout 2018. A recent quote from Claude says it all, there is no better marriage than financial stability and housing. Please join me in congratulating Sue Rudalevich for to, um, receiving the 2018 Volunteer of the Year Award. Thank you, Thank you, Sue. you want to say something? Yes. Well, this is a great honor, of course, but I should say that I'm a retired person and I only do what I want to, mostly. <laughs> and I'd also like to emphasize that this was a team effort. I got the ball rolling and kind of kept it rolling, but we would never have arrived if it was not for the team. And I'd like to give a shout out to Liz McLean, Carolyn May, and Jane Mackler. Thank you, Sherry, and thank you, Sue, again, a big applause for Sue for volunteering for the entire year. I forgot to mention that I have a three weeks baby in a house. My daughter, I call her my princess, Selena, is here, and I'm so happy and honored for my wife and the baby to be in a room tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you, honey. I also forgot to mention, I was on a time crunch, but now I feel like I have more time. All right, all right, they say no. In the last 10 years, we did the work more than just the talk. 
If you are a funder or a sponsor, please find on the table our 10-year impact report, which highlights the major work we have done in the last 10 years. We couldn't fit everything we did in 10 years, but this is just a summary. If you are a funder, a business leader, a banker, I know I saw many of my business friends here, Betsy from CEI, I saw Bill from uh, uh, Bank of America. I saw the CEO of, uh, uh, I'm blinking, Peter for the Savings, and uh, many others, also uh, Community Credit Union in Lewiston. Many of the leaders who have helped us in the past, and Seaport and others, many Credit Union League, you will find yourself in this booklet for a wonderful job well done. Eleven years ago, when I was struggling to start what was then a community financial literacy, I had some help. Ten years later, some of those who helped me are still serving today. And this is a, a just a surprise because people didn't know this was coming. I had privilege to work with wonderful board members who are serving the 10th anniversary with us on the board. I would like to invite Bill Brown, Mutima Pira, and Enkul Kanakan to come on the stage and receive the awards. You know, each one of these people have his own story. I met Bill when I was doing Toastmaster. I was learning how to do a speech in a crowd. And the first thing that I did when I started the organization, I reached out to him and said, can you join my board? He said, yes. Same thing with Enkul Kanakan, a well-respected member of the community from the Congo. When I asked him, would you join, he said, I hope I'm not the only one that you have others who are going to join. <laughs> and finally, my own brother, you can imagine how to work with your own brother. <laughs> I learned a lot from this man. He's a past senior pastor of Bethel Christian Center. He's also my own brother. I learned a lot from him when he founded his own nonprofit. Unfortunately, if he started a business, probably today I'll be a millionaire. But he put me in a nonprofit. <laughs> These three people have been serving on our board for 10 years. <laughs> you know, it's not an easy task to serve on one board year after year. But they served 10 years, and they're still on the board. Please, again, give them applause. Congratulations for serving. Bill Brown, and he was also, he just retired from the chair of the board. And Cole was the first chair of the board when we first started. And the Pastor Mutima is a member of the program and marketing committee and a very spiritual leader for myself. Thank you. Again, please, if you can stand up and give these people a big applause for saving for 10 years. So Helen just asked them to serve another 10 years. I'm just. I did. I don't think I asked though. Now, let me welcome Helen who is already here to make a closing remark. Thank you, Helen. Once again, thank you all for coming this evening. It's really been absolutely fabulous. I want to make a point before we head out. 
uh, to thank one person who is absolutely critical to this evening, to this organization, and that is Claude Raganje. And I, I will similarly ask that everybody here please stand and give him the, what he des deserves. We truly, truly would not be here tonight without you, Claude, without your vision, without your leadership, without your passion. I have a few more thank yous to make. I will echo Claude in thanking the board. Uh, we could not put on this event without them. A few people in particular I'd like to thank, uh, not only just board members, but Byron Bartlett, one of our newest staff members who put a lot of effort into this event. Melissa Rundstrom, who I think is here tonight, who is an amazing volunteer. And if I could, I'm going to echo Quincy. I'm almost done, so if we could just keep it a little quiet in the back, that would be fantastic. Sally Newhall has been with us for several years doing the event. We couldn't do it without her. Madison Nadeau, who's a Prosperity Main staff member and in charge of events. And finally, um, you may not know that I ran this event for at least the last two years. I handed over the reins to the very capable Tara Jenkins, who is a new board member, and she took the lead and ran with it, and I could not be more grateful for her, to her for putting this event together. I also want to once again thank the lead sponsors, Hannaford, Memic, IDEX, Maine Credit Union League, Infinity Federal Credit Union, Norway Savings Bank, and the Residential and Community Support Services. We, again, could not be here without you. And finally, and I think um, most importantly, I want to thank all of the attendees, all of you who support Prosperity Maine with your time, your money, and your passion. I want to thank the business and government leaders who are here tonight. Your voice matters, what you say matters, but also your actions matter. And coming here this evening and supporting this community does absolutely make a difference. And finally, I want to thank everybody who here is here representing the immigrant community. Everybody at Prosperity Maine wants you to know that your many contributions, your knowledge, your talent, your skill, your cu culture are all welcome here in your home state of Maine. And we realize absolutely that a diverse and inclusive community is a prosperous community. So thank you.